Well, we'd, uh, we'd really like to jump right into showing you how map automation can help streamline your workflows, but it looks like we have a bit of a problem with our map document. Uh, we should be seeing some pipeline data here and not a lot of red exclamation points. So we'll ask you to uh, bear with us while we fix this. You know, not so long ago, this would have been uh, really disastrous for a, a user conference demo, but at ArcGIS 10, we've extended the geoprocessing framework. We've added a Python window to the desktop. And we can use Python to load up a script to help us fix these data link issues. Can we load up that script? There we go. All right, let me point out one of the lines here in the script. We're going to iterate through each of the layers in our document and update the data source property to reflect the new path to the data. Let's go ahead and run that. As easily as that, we can bring our map document right back to life. Now, having taken the time to create this map document, wouldn't it be great if a month down the road, if we can't really remember where we saved this document, but we need to use it again, if we could do a simple search for the information in this document? Let's see what kind of document tags we can search against to find this. All right, not much there. Not much there at all. In fact, nothing. Nothing. And let's be frank, how many of us really take the time to update the document tags in our map documents? It's a fairly tedious task. But again, map automation can help us uh, alleviate some of that tedium. Again, we can turn to Python and run a script here. Let's go ahead and run that. That will iterate through each of the layers in our map document and add the layer name as a tag to the document tag list. And here we have quite a number of tags here that we can search against. And this is great, because if someone is interested in finding a map document about carbon dioxide, they could search for CO2, and the, which would return this document, because it does indeed contain a layer of pipelines carrying carbon dioxide. All right, so we've fixed the data links in our map document, and we've updated the tags. So now we can get down to the business at hand. Suppose we're supporting a team of inspectors who are assessing the serviceability of pipelines in the Houston area. We'd like to build them a set of map books that they can take with them that map their search areas and their work areas. Before we build this map document, let's enhance our map a little bit with a nice base map to add a little bit of visual perspective. Now, a map book is based on a grid, and we have a layer in our table of contents here that, provides, that divides the map into a set of evenly spaced, uh, evenly sized squares. And we'll use that grid to generate our map book. New at ArcGIS 10, is a new toolbar called Data Driven Pages. And on that toolbar is a button that allows us to set the properties and generate a new map book. We'll set our map book to be created from this index grid in our table of contents and go ahead and, and make our new map book. Great, let's switch over to the layout view now and see what we have. All right, here's our layout view of our map book. And if we step through the first couple of pages, we'll see that each feature, each square or cell in that index grid is used to define a new work area or a search area or a page in our map book. The data updates from page to page, but it's not just the data that updates. That's the, the, the really great thing. Let's zoom in on some of that title text there. Right. The nice thing about the, uh, the dynamic nature of map books at ArcGIS 10 is that we can have text that dynamically updates from page to page. Take a look at the mileage of pipe in search area text there. As we go from page to page, you notice that that value changes, and that's driven directly from the data in our map document. Now, not only can we have dynamic text that, that is updated from data, but map properties as well, such as the, uh, the page or the adjacent map guide. Now, if we export this document, we'll end up with a multiple page PDF document. Our challenge then is, how do we get that into the hands of the people who need it, the inspectors? An excellent solution is to turn to the internet. We can build a simple web application such as this one that provides an interactive map. Now, an inspector could come here and hit the button and download the entire map book, but a 30-page map book might be a little bit of overkill, especially if that inspector only needs a, a, a fairly small area. So they might be able to zoom and pan to a, in the interactive map to the area that interests them or that, where they need to go. Let's say the, uh, the pipeline's on this island in the area right around it. We can drag a rectangle on the map and send a request to the server, which will dynamically generate sort of a mini map book for just these four pages that cover that island and the areas around it. Oh, great. Let's see what we have here. Let's open up that PDF. 
And there we have it, a four-page mini map book containing just the information that that inspector might need. The ArcGIS scripting environment has been dramatically enhanced to provide you with many new ways to automate your workflows. Map books are now easy to generate. In addition, the ArcGIS framework enables you to leverage these enhancements in a web environment.